Welcome to Alpha Wolf Capital. I'm Tim and I want to personally thank you for stopping by. Between the OTC, New York Stock Exchange, and NASDAQ, there are over 22,000 companies traded publicly. I feel that small businesses are the backbone of America. The number one reason for this channel is to help small companies gain exposure with potential consumers, investors, even partners. Take, for example, today's guest. CEO Arjan Haberhals from Milestone Scientific, who has a system that is computer-aided delivery of anesthesia. Arjan received transformational news after our interview last week, and he is here today on a Sunday to share the significance of that news that he received out of Florida this news shows they are executing and sets the path for commercialization. It's important for you to understand that this is not a paid for promotion. I do not collect compensation for the interviews I do here. I do look for companies that could potentially provide an above average return on investment, but that is not the primary reason for the channel. There's a thing called impact investing. It's, it's tied to environmental, social, and governance. I think that is a very narrow definition of what impact can be. By helping a small company become a large corporation, if you and I can become ambassadors of a product because the values of that company align with our own, think of all the jobs that will be created as that small company becomes a big company. Think about the community that that company is in. Typically, they thrive along with the company. This channel is to help companies that are relatively unknown become known so that they can build a following and they can have brand ambassadors that share their vision, share their mission, and are willing to do what they can to help have a positive impact on humanity. That's what this channel is all about. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. I am not a financial advisor. I recommend highly that before buying any security, you speak to a financial advisor and do your own due diligence. Hey everybody, Tim from Alpha Wolf Trading coming at you with a, uh, a follow-up to a follow-up. <laughs> Because, Arjan, it, it seems like I just had you here, man. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> seems like it was maybe just a week ago that we were talking about uh, potentially some some exciting things happening. And, boy, you sure did have some, some exciting news that came out. And I, I don't know if people recognize the magnitude of, of what this represents, but uh, you're going to share that with us. Arjan, uh, from Milestone scientific and uh you got you got to feel pretty proud of yourself right now yeah yeah no first of all tim thank you for having me on this beautiful sunday morning i really appreciate uh, uh that you are willing to conduct this interview um look it's not so much about me it's more about uh, what the company deserves to get and more importantly uh, we are finally coming over a hurdle uh, to be able to provide our technology for patients that are in need. Like I said in, in earlier meetings uh, where we are focusing on, you know, um, supplying them and making technologies available and accessible, improved healthcare outcome, uh, safer, more comfortable predictable and taking out the risks of uh, epidural analgesia procedures or chronic back pain procedures out of the equation. So yes, uh, yes, long story short, I am proud. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So give us a, kind of give us a, a overview of what exactly happened on yeah. Sunday. So, so what we have been working on uh, in prior calls that I alluded on, I explained uh, to the community, to the investors community, uh, to interesting parties, uh, what our roadmap was for an establishment of reimbursement. Now, reimbursement establishment is a, a very general term, right? Uh, a year ago, in the beginning of 2023, we got a tracking code. It allowed clinicians to submit 
the cases, the clinical cases, the documentation, billing and coding, sending it into both commercial payers and to Medicare providers with the goal to make them aware about the arrival of a new technology that is safer for the patient population. So you send in the claims, the claims are going to be evaluated, you probably get denial, uh, you appeal, you deny, you appeal, that's a process of six to nine months. So we started actively with a number of clinics in the United States in April, 2023. Now, how it works is that there are 12 so-called JMAC regions, Medicare JMAC regions in the United States covering the 50 states. So we have, you know, established us in seven. And of course, the first one that we were dealing with were a little bit more advanced and more enhanced. And that resulted then uh, that as per the media release that we did um, last week, that first coast, which is the JMAC covering uh, the state of Florida and Puerto Rico, um, decided and granted payment for our technology as a dynamic pressure guidance system uh, for patients uh, that need to have an uh, epidural steroid injection after the clinician have submitted uh, their files and their claims uh, to First Coast and thereby have been also proven the medical necessity. Now, that's a major step for the company moving forward. Okay, so... I think in your in your press release you had there's like 1.6 million uh, procedures done a year in Florida, and of the 1.6 million, they're about 40 percent are covered by Medicaid, right? Yes, that's correct. So uh, based on our own market research and the data that are available, our estimates uh, for Florida, the state of Florida alone, is as you say. 1.6 million epidural steroid injections. Uh, and then what we know from the private uh, clinics and clinicians is that uh, as a rule of thumb, uh, and also focused on research again, that's 40% of the population are covered by Medicare. So that gives you then the potential number of procedures that the market would entail. Uh, and then I indicated uh, you know, a potential uh, number, if you would multiply that uh, by, uh, you know, an, an, a rather conservative uh, price point that will give you an, an addressable market for our company of about 125 to 150 million, depends on uh, on some parameters. But I think that's a, that's a good indication of what that importance is, right? So... And, and it's not only the state of Florida, because like I said, we have um, we have a strategy, we execute on it, uh, and we continue uh, our roadshow uh, in, uh, and our goal and our aim uh, to get more JMAX across the nation, uh, thereby expanding uh, the utilization and potentially the adoption and also of our technology. But I would really, really like to underline and underscore that this is a major step and a major milestone for our company. I think uh, it would be one of the most important activities and achievements uh, in the history of our company. Um, and uh, I would like to to uh, to make sure that everybody understands that. In particular, like I always said, we live in an environment where that even in, in spite of a disruptive technology that is safer, more comfortable, predictable, et cetera, uh, we always have to, uh, you know, uh, maneuver within the bandwidth and within the framework that our healthcare environment uh, has set for us. And that's what we have been doing. It took, it took some time. But at least uh, what we can say now is that private payers in private clinics having Medicare patients and they are sending in the claim and they prove medical necessity that First Coast uh, has decided to grant payments uh, for these procedures, uh, which is above, uh, let's say, the cost of the consumable. So in other words, and it comes in addition to the primary code. So in other words, you can say that there is an incentive for the clinicians to use the technology 
in addition to the clinical and the uh, the medical uh, reasons for using our technology. And, and I think that is, of course, a very important stimulus uh, for the further commercial commercialization of our technology and our company. So to break that down, what you're essentially saying is the, the clinician is going to uh, benefit monetarily from from submitting that paperwork, right? Yes. So, like for me, you know, I don't want to to have this pitch that uh, you know now it is because of a monetary incentive that it's easier. We always have to to really take a height and respect the guidelines and that we are working within the healthcare environment. But yes, absolutely, we know that. For new technologies, if they want to be successful, there must be a reimbursement incentive and there must be a, a, a coverage or a payment uh, by the insurance providers, being it commercial, being it Medicare, uh, that facilitate and that stimulate and also the use. Because we know how healthcare, the cost of healthcare is increasing. We know that there's a lot of pressure on the companies on one side, on the patients on the other side, and and on the clinicians on the third side. So, uh, you know, it facilitates uh, in all directions, uh, you know, the usage of our technology. It's more accessible uh, for the patients. It's more accessible uh, for the clinics. Um, and, you know, I'm very pleased that we are... Uh, executing on our mission and that we are achieving the parameters we set for our mission that is making, uh, you know, healthcare, improving the healthcare outcome, making our technology available, increase the accessibility, which is then also affordable for patients and clinicians. I think that's what it boils down to in a nutshell. Okay, so you and I touched on um, AI real quick. Yeah. Briefly, before we before we checked out from the interview uh, a week ago, yeah. But the data, I mean, assuming that you have a, a big increase in procedures, right? Um, and the data that you collect there, I mean, is there does that is there a, the possibility that that even strengthens your case more? I mean, do you collect? <clears throat> no, absolutely. I I don't rule it out. Uh, I think what is important, of course, always to remember that even, uh, you know, with numerous data points, at the end of the day, the clinician still has to make the evaluation and the decision and comes with the confirmation that he can confirm that the epidural needle is in the epidural space. But to your point, the AMA uh, invited company like ours about two years ago um, using that whole umbrella of artificial intelligence and data points and data collection, stimulating companies that have the potential to work in that era and in that area uh, to apply for uh, for new technical codes or new tracking codes or temporary codes, right? So um, absolutely, I don't rule it out. Uh, but at the end of the day, the, the clinician still has to make uh, his judgment, so to say. Okay, got it. Uh, so tr transformational is what I what I would say, right? I mean, this Absolutely. is uh, this is a big big deal, and the stock is is reflecting that, right? I mean, it had a, a nice move, um, and it's we're gonna I'm gonna go over this real quick just because it's a very interesting chart. I mean, you're you're uh, right now testing the the one dollar mark, but you have already broken what would be the long-term trend i'm going to move your i'm going to move your logo for a second i'll put it back but um if i were if i were you <laughs> anybody watching um yes it, it has had a nice move but you know this is really uh just kind of the beginning of what could be a, a much larger move so uh with this type of news and you know as as the numbers start to come in but I want to real quickly show everybody that this has been in a downtrend since 2000 and, uh, 2021. Had a big spike and then has been in a downtrend since. 
And if I could draw a line, but for some reason my uh, my deal's not working, but you can see it's going from the upper left down to the lower right. And then what you have down here is actually a pretty nice formation. It's, it's got a uh, reverse head and shoulders. There's a, there's a shoulder here, head there, shoulder here, and this would be the neckline, this green line. And you got the next area of resistance right at a buck which is right where the stock is sitting at a dollar, which is not unusual because you have a stock that is going from be, being a penny stock to over a dollar. It's now a dollar stock. <clears throat> and hedge funds that um, have covenants that won't allow them to buy, own shares of a stock underneath a dollar, uh, this is when they can start to get involved. Some hedge funds have covenants you get, can't get involved below five dollars but you know there's a whole bunch of them out there that have the dollar mark is is a big spot so you're challenging that right now you closed above it i think the next area where there's a little bit of resistance kind of a more significant area of resistance is is right around about a buck 27 somewhere in that area once you close above that now you've now you've got a really nice floor to work from and I think it's important for the stock to consolidate a little bit, right? You don't want this thing to shoot straight up. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you do, but you want it to work its way up, stair step higher. That's very healthy actions. Straight up is nice and fun, but it typically doesn't last for that long. It usually comes back, crashing back down just as fast. So, mm -hmm. I think the the key area to watch here is is right around about a buck twenty five, buck twenty seven. Close above that, and I think I think this is a really really attractive area to uh, potentially start building a position. I mean, it could it come back down and, and test seventy five cents? It absolutely could, but I think you have a pretty good floor there. So really, you've got a, a good range to. Uh, to consider taking either an entry position or whatever. I'm not telling anybody to buy the stock. That's not what I do. I'm just saying fundamentally you have a massive transformational catalyst for the company. And technically it's setting up for a major trend reversal. So uh, lower left down to the, or upper left down to the lower right. Now potentially lower left to the upper right right? A whole new trend. So could be a very, very exciting time. Arjan, congratulations on your hard work, man. Thank you. Right? I mean, you got to feel pretty good. <laughs> but you're not done. I can tell, you know, th this is just the beginning. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Um, you know, this was the first, uh, let's say, important indicator that we were waiting for um uh, and then there are next steps that we have to take and uh, that we will take um you know this is uh, i would always say the start of the beginning and uh, we will use this to further roll it out to other jmax but uh, look let's not be too greedy at the same time right just the the significance of one state uh with 1.6 million uh, epidural steroid injection procedure and even take it you take the 40 percent out that's enough work for a couple of people on the commercial side to execute on that and to get those, um, uh, you know, institutions over and using our technology, right? But to your point, yes, the plan is absolutely to expand it in more jurisdictions, uh, you know, and we will share that uh, with the investors community. And um, I will not go into, you know, when that is going to happen, Uh um, you know, I'm still uh, very pleased and happy that we have taken the first hurdle uh, and there's more to come. Um, and I'm convinced about that. And uh, that has always been my point in these discussions. Yes, we have a strategy. We will execute on it. We follow the process. That's what we are doing. Uh, and we share the information when the facts are on the table. And that there is, uh, you know, tangible information that everybody can be uh, happy and pleased about. Uh, and I will continue doing uh, what we have been doing is uh, guiding 
the company, the team and my people and myself and uh, always focusing on uh, what other people believe. It's impossible. Well, we always focusing on one thing and that is making the impossible possible. And I think this is uh, proof of that. This is one of the first indication of what uh, our team has been able to do uh, in this uh, field of uh, of medical healthcare. Uh, one, 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 just curiosity question. I mean, it was what about childbirth? I mean, labor and and that. I mean, is that that's a different? That's a, a totally different deal. That's is that not covered or? No, so so it's primary epidural steroid injections in the first part. And what you have to think is private ASCs and hospitals. So you have different buckets, so to say, in that whole reimbursement uh, system. Now, what I always say in the hospital environment, our cost associated with this technology, and if you compare it to the overall cost of labor and delivery, it's not gigantic, right? The the our cost will be normally absorbed in the overall cost for the potent, for the entire labor and delivery procedure. And a labor and delivery procedure for the mother and the child at the hospital is is about sixteen to seventeen thousand dollars. So, you know, our cost is not adding up a gigantic amount on it. So, uh, but there are other factors within a hospital environment that you have to go uh, go through. Um, at the same time, uh, you know, if we looked at the neurosurgery department in one major hospital or major hospitals and they use it for spinal cord stimulators, reimbursement is not an issue. They wanted to have that technology because it outweighs the potential risks that they see when they do those procedures. So, and, and and of course, another point, of course, from, from a company perspective, like I always said, prior to my arrival, the company was playing in 2.4 million market segment of the 11 million, right? Because you had 4 million births, 2.4 million epidural procedures during epidural analgesia, but we didn't have access to the overall market of 11 million. So when I started with indication expansion, when I started with getting reimbursement, uh, tracking codes, uh, submissions, um, we didn't have that capability to increase our accessibility to the total addressable market of being 11 million procedures a year in the US. That's where we are now. And on top of that, we have the first indication that one major state that is covering about 18% of all the epidural steroid procedures in the United States have granted payment to private to private clinicians that have uh, proven the medical necessity and send in the claims for their patients. So I would say it's a pretty darn good story uh, for everybody involved. So when you say the pri private, you're talking like the pain clinics, right? Is that, is yeah. that, okay, yeah. got it. Okay, got it. So there's pain clinics, and then what you said there's three segments. There's, there's the hospital, and so you have the pain clinics, and then you have the surgery centers where pain physicians uh, either group or they are independent uh, physicians belonging to the uh, pain centers, and then you have the hospitals, right? Got so it. We, we, are, we are following that route, we are following uh, that evolution, and uh, and um, that's where we have, uh, you know, our actions uh, targeted at. Okay. How, as, do you have an estimation on how many pain clinics there are in the United States by any chance? Um, yeah, on the top of my head, I think, well, let me come back to you, but it is, it, it is private pain clinics is between five, 6,000 uh, clinics, I would say. Okay, uh, but there's a whole, you know, I don't want to throw out numbers because all these numbers, I get people, it. It's open for misinterpretation, and then people start calculating themselves. Uh, <laughs> and with me, we know what we are doing. We're sitting on the data. We know how many procedures are performed uh, per um, uh, per physician. It's it's not only the the clinics as such. It's more about the number of physicians uh, in the United States. Uh, that are performing these procedures. Got it. Got it. Well, Arjan, it was worth coming in on a Sunday. That I mean, this is, uh, 
Yeah, I'm I'm so I'm super happy for you. I'm super happy for the for the for the customer too, for the end user, right? I mean, this yeah. is a win 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 across the board. Absolutely. All right. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you're going to be able to top this one, but uh, maybe when you have the your next your next accomplishment, we'll uh, we'll have you back. We'll do another follow up. But uh, you know, like I said, if if you're not following milestone. This would probably be a really good time to put them on your radar. Ticker yeah. symbol is MLSS. And um, you can go to their website, sign up for their email alerts. So that way, when something significant comes out, it'll get sent directly to your email. You won't have to go search the headlines. It'll be right there in your email for you. So, Arjan, thank you so much for coming in, man. Thank you for having me, Tim. Enjoy the rest of the day. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for tuning in to another CEO interview here at Alpha Wolf Capital. Today we had Arjan Haverhals from Milestone Scientific, ticker symbol MLSS. I hope you enjoyed today's interview. And if you did, do us a favor, give us a like. How about giving us a share? And while you're at it, make sure you smash that subscribe button. All of those things are extremely important to us here at Alpha Wolf capital and we appreciate you taking the time to do that until next time stay safe alpha wolf capital wishes you the very best of success